for another video. You saw the title. You saw the thumbnail. It, it's NRG. What if Deku was energy? NRG. It's actually one. He's one of my favorite aliens. If I'm being honest, give me a moment. Anyway, let's get on with the what if. Now Deku would be born, and what? One faithful day, he would go to the Quirk Doctor and learn about his Quirk. It would be a interesting little bugger of a Quirk. Basically, an energy absorption Quirk. Like, like, one fall. It's a stockpiling Quirk. Well, a type. Any energy launched at Deku, he can redirect, he can absorb, so on and so forth. And here's the thing, his body can no longer metabolize solid foods, only energy. So, well, he kind of has to tase himself three times a day. <laughs> uh, that's a joke. But, yeah. Anyway, since it's presumed to be a weak quirk, uh, give me a moment, I have to feed my cats. Let's continue. Uh, it's presumed to be a weak quirk, so no one would care, and Deku would still be bullied. Except Bakugo would be unable to use his explosions, because, well, you know how the quirk works. Anyway, one day Deku would be standing up to Bakugo, as well, a kid behind him, um, you know, bruised and beaten, so on and so forth. But, yeah. Anyway, Bakugo doesn't take too kindly to that. As he would say, You really think you can stand up to me, Deku? Look, you may be unbothered by my quirk, but my friends over here, well, they can still give you a nice little bean. As, well, that's exactly what he would do. After, well, Deku's... After the beating and Deku was on the ground, you know, beaten up, the person would introduce themselves and thank him. They would say, uh, Hi, thank, thanks, uh, my name's Denki Kaminari. Uh, wh what's yours? Izuku Midoriya. Denki and Deku would shake hands as Denki would say, Well, yeah, neat. Uh, my mom's calling me, but maybe we can play someday. And Deku would nod and they would sh shake hands once more and, well, Denki would go home, but Deku has made a new friend. Anyway, time would pass to about a month before the start of the, uh, no, two years before the start of the anime. Deku is, well, being bullied and chased by Bakugo and his goons, as they would enter a nearby nuclear power plant that, well, was out of commission, as you could say. There would be no security, there would be no one in it, because it's, well, in need of renovation. It's, you know, needs maintenance. And, well, the maintenance crews have been off for the day. Well, had gotten off t for the day. So, as Bakugo would chase Deku inside, they would eventually get close to, well, a vat of nuclear waste. One that was meant to be dumped. One that was meant to be dumped within the following week. As Bakugo and his goons would approach Deku, Deku backing up closer and closer to the edge, he would end up falling back into it. it taking a, he would take a step back and fall into it, as Bakugo would quickly run to him to see if he's, you know, alive. If anyone found out that he had killed Deku, then his chances of being a hero are out of... Out the window. Deku would fall in as his quirk would quickly activate. 
and the pool would begin to get absorbed. The amount of, well, nuclear energy would decrease. Its sickly green glow would decrease. As within seconds, it's just a vat of polluted water. And a orange glow is at the bottom of it. As it would begin to bubble and bubble, and then with it, with a blast, Deku would come skyrocketing out of it. His body absorbed a large amount of energy so his quirk could finally fully awaken. Because his quirk's kind of been half awake. Think like Todoroki. Except, in except instead of him actively choosing not to use his one part of his quirk, he just didn't know that part was there. Well, because he's never had enough energy for it. Anyway. So, yeah. His body is now essentially a mass of fire and energy. Deku would say in a distorted voice, What? What? Uh, my, what have... Uh, uh, him, him not even being able to form a proper sentence. I didn't... Look, in case you're wondering why I was talking like that, it was A, because it would sound cool, and B, I kind of didn't know what to put there. <laughs> uh. Anyway, so, naturally, Deku was extremely pissed. And he would react with violence in this new state of his by shooting out a blast of concentrated, basically thermonuclear energy, able to melt through the solid uh, cast iron of beneath Bakugo and the platform therein, as Bakugo and his goons would begin running, running away. Deku would chase after them, hovering off the ground, and while well, traveling at them like he's a flaming missile. As well, they would reach where the nuclear power plant stores majority of its rods, as Deku would begin pulling them out and eating them. As he would pull the rods out, they would be nothing more than just depleted uranium, no radiation left to so much as even speak of. As he would keep on eating said rods, his body would get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. As well. Eventually he would have so much energy that he's just able to blow a hole through the walls. It's blasting immense amounts of energy, just trying to find where Bakugo is, trying to make him pay for what he's done. Because, I'll say this, uh, falling into a nuclear vat and then being burnt alive to the degree where you, where your nerves, your flesh, nothing's left, not even bones, is quite painful. It's very painful. And while now Deku is just a solid... Well, not even solid, just a being made out of pure fire. Pure energy. Pure heat. He will... I, I doubt if... I doubt he can even have children. <laughs> but, yeah. Naturally, he's very pissed off at Bakugo. Anyway, the heroes would come, sort out this entire deal. Ordeal, and, well... News what of what would have transpired would spread like wildfire. Anyway, about a few months ago, there would be a competition, you know, the government trying to mitigate the fact that they let a bunch of children into an empty nuclear power plant. You know, they left a nuclear power plant unprotected, unguarded, and where a bunch of children could push another child into a vat of nuclear waste. 
which drove said child to the point of damn near madness. You know, you know, you would think the government would try and cover that up a bit. <laughs> anyway, so the government would try and cover that up by doing something good for said kid. They would have a contest of whoever can build the most durable outer shell, you know, kind of pseudo body. Giant F off armor suit. Uh, huh. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah, let's continue. Anyway, the government would have a contest. Whoever can build Deku, uh, you know, the best kind of suit for him that, you know, so he doesn't burn everything when he touches it, and, you know, can live a half-decent normal life, now that he basically can't so much as even hug his own mother. <laughs> uh, yeah. They, they just kind of want to fix their image a bit. So they would ha hold a contest to see who ever can build, well, the most durable suit for Deku. Anyway, one of the contestants would be a girl named Mei Hatsume. As well, you know, Deku would be there, reluctantly, to try on a few of the suits, big old clunky things, but majority of them would melt. As well, May would kind of sneak backstage and just be like, Hi, I'm May. Oh, ah! Deku would jump back in surprise, like, What are you doing here? It, it, isn't this kind of like an, a break period? Why are you here? Oh, uh, you know, just, just here to uh, inform you about you know, the thing I built for you, uh, oh, another contestant, okay, uh, uh, look, I'm not in the, no, 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 let me speak. Anyway, this particular baby, baby, oh, what? Uh, yeah, I call my inventions babies. Oh, that's not as, that's a little strange, I guess. Look who's talking. May would just sort of move her hand towards Deku and his entire body. Fair enough. Anyway, uh, basically I made it out of an alloy that is, well, very durable, so I think it should be able to take your heat, body heat. I also added in a few vents so you can still, you know, absorb energy, because I heard you need to do that in order to, you know, live. Yeah, but I have enough to last me uh, a couple hundred or so years. Well, not hundred, more so a hundred years. I don't know about my lifespan in this form, but, uh... Yeah, I don't know either, so I just put that in. Anyway... Anyway, I hope... In the future, you'll let me test a few of my, you know, babies on you. You know, see if they're durable enough, see how much energy they can produce, how much you can absorb, so on and so forth. You know, that's, that's kind of the only compensation I'm really looking for, aside from a bit of money for my, uh, you know, home toasted defense system. Deku would look at Mei and just think to himself quietly, this bitch crazy. <laughs> anyway, see you. Wait, how did you get back here? Oh, you know, just uh, had to choke out a few of the guards. But, you know, security. Deku would stare at her for a few moments and say, They had security here, but not at the power plant? Oh my f Fuck! May would just look at him and say, You know what? That's an understandable reaction. Bye bye. She would say, just walking off. I don't even think I can be her in this form. Like, 
Oh my goodness, get your priorities straight! Deku would just have a silent mental breakdown in, in the waiting area that he has. Just, like... I, I can't even hug my mother because they didn't put so much as even one! One security guard? But apparently there are multiples here? Why? Anyway, so it would get to May's turn. You know, whoever wins gets a small compensation of a hundred thousand whatever the fucks. <laughs> uh, I don't know what currency they would give, like, I guess yen. A hundred thousand yen. Anyway, you know, May's suit would actually fit pretty well. It would fit, it would work. He can still use his quirk from the inside, so he still has the possibility of becoming a hero. And, well, yeah, it's pretty nice. If she ends up becoming a hero, joining the hero course, he might actually have his, you know, suit made. You know, his possible future hero suit made by her. Anyway, we skip to the start of the anime. You know, Deku's been hanging out with both Mei and Denki. You know, they're three best friends. Anyway, you know, Bach, the teacher, goes, walks into the class, throws the papers in the air, says, Oh, forget it, I know you all want to be heroes. <laughs> the papers would fly out the window. As one of the kids would say, Actually, I wanted to be a firefighter, and, well, there goes my application form! <laughs> the teacher would just stare and say, eh, I made copies. He would say as he would pick up the copies, and then the copies would just sort of slip out of his hand and also go out the window. Well, good thing I made copies of co- just Bakugo would quickly run up to him and just shut him up. <laughs> I, I don't know how many copies you made, so uh, maybe just don't take those ones out. We believe you. G good grief, I want to at least, you know, have my form for you, A. Because I'm the only person who can go. Ha ha ha. You know, Bakugo would go on his rant. Deku's just thinking... What a piece of shit. <laughs> he would say that out loud accidentally. Bakugo would look at him before quickly shutting up because, you know, he's kind of the p reason why Deku's in a giant fuck-off metal suit. <sighs> Most of the class would agree with Deku. You know, Daku would just lean back in his chair and flip Bakugo the hell off. Bakugo would continue to grumble to himself as he can't really do anything due to the multiple restraining orders that have been filed against him. <sighs> so the day would end. Bakugo would really, you know... Not be able to do that much, considering he's the reason Deku's once again in the giant half-half metal suit. <sighs> so, Deku would just be walking home under the bridge, because why the hell not? He feels like it. The sludge villain would burst from the sewer grate and just say, Give me your body! <laughs> Deku would look at him and say, D did I change universes? I, I need to check if I'm a chick right now, because, uh... This, this is something straight out of a hentai! <laughs> the sludge villain would stare at him blankly and just say, Oh... Look... Uh, I don't know how to respond to that, so I'm just gonna take your body! He would proceed to enter Deku's, well... Great of a face, and immediately get burned. As Deku would say, 
Oh, F off. Oh, fuck off. As a blast of energy would just rupture right out of his face hole. Just flame blast. As the sludge villain would yell, Oh shit, this hurts! Why does it hurt? I feel my body boiling! As Deku would say, Hey, then don't go around taking your... Taking other people's bodies! Good grief! Not only are you just a pervert, you're just plain weird! The sludge villain would continue to scream in absolute agony. Oh, I feel my eyes and my teeth! Why do I feel my teeth? As his eyes would boil. Okay, here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that the human eyeball is actually majority liquid? Yes. And also did you know that if the human eyeball is placed under extreme heat, like, for example, being lit on fire, uh, after prolonged exposure to said heat, the eyeball will explode. Yes, you heard me right. It takes like an hour, I think, under normal circumstances. But since Teku is producing thermonuclear fire, <laughs> the eyeballs of the sludge villain would quickly burst within like a minute. Ah, oh, my eyes! They're blurry! <laughs> the sludge villain would just slowly fall into a puddle on the ground. It hurts. My life hurts. <laughs> I think I may have went a bit overboard. Darko would just say quietly to himself as All Might would burst from the sewer grate like, I am here! Uh, where is the sludge villain? Deku would just point to the puddle on the ground with a few just red blood marks on the walls. <laughs> what happened? Well, I used my quirk, which is, you know, Fire. Wait, you don't recognize me? All Might would quickly think to himself before saying, Oh, yeah. Zuka Midoriya. How you been? You know, since that incident. You know, you were one of the people there who tried to offer me a suit, and it was a business suit. I was told that it was a... Once again, I was told that it was a one made from a certain material that couldn't be burned. When I touched it, it lit on fire and turned to dust. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I'm just not going to talk about this. Uh, he tried to steal my body, and then he kind of just got burnt alive. You know, his eyeballs ruptured, and, well, I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Like, by accident, but he tried to enter my thing, and then the heat was too much for his eyes, and then he just kind of burst. It was... it. You can classify this as suicide or self-defense. You know what? I'm not gonna question this. I'm just gonna scoop up the evidence. <laughs> Deku would just walk away like, See ya, you retard. That's not very nice. Yeah, well, uh... You kind of are. You know, All Might would think to himself and say, Have you been talking to Sir Night Eye recently? Because, like, he said the exact same thing to me this morning. Deku would just shrug and walk away. <laughs> uh, that kid is probably going to... Uh, that kid is probably going to go to, he, he's probably going to wipe out, like, majority of the city. Just, just, he, he'll probably do it. Maybe. 
You know what? I'm not gonna question this anymore. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's about all I got. Goodbye, my lovely, lovely audience. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed this. I know I did. I'll probably make a part two in the future if that's what you y'all want. Anyway, goodbye, my lovely, lovely audience. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.